Hi there, and welcome back to the Pleasure Dome. <laughs> That's how I view the garden. It's the Pleasure Dome. Never a moment goes past without the potential for some uh, some fun and games and that kind of uh, sense of satisfaction and well-being in the garden. So the Pleasure Dome sounds right to me. So I've been starting over the last couple of years, I have to say I'm a little bit late to the party here, um, to experiment with peat-free. And I've for the last couple of years I've used these um, peat-free uh, grow bags and uh, I found them to work rather well I have to say. Um, one major difference apart from the fact that it's not got any peat in it is that rather than using it flat and making a, a cut in the top there and putting your plants in the kind of the uh, the, the, the that, that front top side of the uh, of the bag we're going to stand this bag up Ooh. and cut <laughs> cut along the top and plant into it um, just like I have this one here so here's one I made earlier <laughs> and uh, what I tend to do because these are only I think they're about 30 litres of compost in here and I just find that the more compost tomatoes have got the stronger they grow the more um, nutrients the more moisture they can they, they can hold in reserve in the compost because the compost becomes almost like the life support for the plants really so the more volume of compost they've got the chunkier the plants I find so what I've done is I've topped up in addition to the compost that was already in the grow bag I've cut along the top there and I've topped up with some extra compost there and um, I'm going to do a little experiment. So in this bag here, I've topped up with another peat, another peat-free um, compost. Very popular here in the uh, in the UK, uh, Dalford Compost. Uh, I'm not on commission. I've gone out and bought this bag myself. Um, <laughs> so there's no kind of um, no. I've got no hidden agenda here. I just want to. Um, trial it out so and this this compost is is manufactured using um, a mixture of wool and bracken and maybe a few other things but the main contents are wool sheep's wool uh, that's been shredded and and, and kind of um, processed and mixed with uh, with bracken dried bracken leaves i guess uh, and on this one here i'm going to do the same as i've done in previous years and use oh. This compost here which for the last oh i guess the last 15 years has been my favorite um uh, compost this is not peat free um this has got greatly reduced peat content it's down to about 35 percent i'm told uh this year so we're on a little, little experiment it's the same size bag and we're going to grow two tomato plants in there and we're going to grow two tomato plants in there this one will be topped up so that's 100 percent peat free in in that bag there and this one here is going to be well i suppose it's going to be about 15 percent um peat free by the time we've combined this stuff here which is 30 percent peat free and that stuff there which is totally peat free enough waffle from me let's get the compost topped up in that bag there i'm going to just shake the bag around a bit because it's got some uh, it's got some lumps in there so if ever you're planting up your um your your grow bags uh, with uh, with with um with tomatoes or other veg because the way that they're packaged on pallets and things they're often quite compressed it's worth loosening up the compost inside the bag shake it about a bit get your hand in there break down any lumps and then i'm going to top it up with um uh, some more uh, I, I think it's probably going to be about 10 litres maybe 15 litres of compost additional to the bag so if we started off with 30 litres in the bag by the time I finish topping it up it's going to be 40 45 litres and the extra um, 10 15 litres will make a big difference in the hot spells in summer to um, store some extra moisture let's get on and do it <laughs> Right, here we go we're ready to do the planting now and i've got two different varieties uh this one here is similar by all accounts um to sun gold which has over the years has proven to be probably our tastiest and most reliable uh cherry tomato oh they are gorgeous and you will see them on several other tomato videos on on this here channel 
so honeycomb is supposed to be um, equally good, if not sweeter. So, but there's a thing with tomatoes, getting that balance between sweetness and that kind of slightly tangy, um, not acidic, but that kind of, you want to get that tomato-y tang as well, don't you? I've been disappointed over the years with alternatives to, uh, to Sun Gold, um, but I'm going to give this one a go because I've heard some good reports about it. So that's tomato honeycomb. And then we've got uh, some uh, Sun Cherry Smile here, which is um, from the same, if I understand it correctly, from the same people who bred uh, Sun Gold. Um, it's from the same kind of parentage or the same the same um, the same company at least who who, uh, who developed Sun Gold have developed a few other Sun varieties and this is one called Sun Cherry Smile which is a lovely sweet um, it's quite small firm cherry uh, red tomato. One of the things that you might have seen me do in previous years and it's a little bit naughty. Um, probably if I was to go textbook with you, I would say to take out all these side shoots here. I have discovered over the years that if I don't put too many plants in a grow bag, I'm just putting two in these with the added, added compost, um, I can get away with having one or two side shoots running and trained up from the bottom, which will give me two or three times the number of fruit clusters. In other words, a much heavier crop. I wouldn't do any more than that. So this side shoot here, you see him? There's the main stem, there's the leaf stem. That side shoot is going to come out. And that's a constant job. There's another little one you can just see starting there. So he can come out. That's a constant job through the summer is removing those side shoots. But I'm going to, whoops, but I'm going to allow uh, these two to, um, to grow away and I'll support them on, uh, on some, some strings and so, or some, some um, bamboo canes. And we just get a bigger a bigger crop. What's not to like about that? I need to do the same with this one. I'm going to allow that one and that one. Actually, I'm going to allow that one there that's going off to the left and that one there that's going out straight in front because I can train him up into that kind of panel of glass there alongside the door. So this one here, which is going out to the right, is just going to get stuck underneath um, underneath there. So he's coming out. He's coming out. Is there another one on the side there? Yes, there is. So that's got rid of them. Let's get them in the compost. So into this peat-free compost mix here. There we are, my friend. The best of luck to you. Show us what this compost can do. Gentle firm down. There's our two side shoots that we've allowed. Naughty but nice. And then make another hole here. There we go. And just nudge the compost around there. Give them a little firm down. And of course we're gonna give these guys a little drink. Um, just now, I'll give these boys a, a nice little drink to get them started and they're going to need um, some supports. We'll get the bamboo canes in and then we'll probably run some strings along, uh, yeah, we'll run some strings along horizontally between the bamboo canes to help support those. I need to get these, uh, these ones in now to this um, compost, which is partially peat free, but not completely. And we're going to compare the two. Um, Normally in this kind of compost, most composts, you've probably got about a month's worth of, of, of fertilizer. It depends on the, the temperature and how, how much they're, they're being watered and what the plants are. A month to six weeks maybe um, of, uh, of, uh, of fertilizer in there. So I'm expecting, um, where are we now, early May, I'm expecting by the end of May, um, by then we, we'll probably have, early June, we'll probably have our first little cluster of tomatoes set Probably if we looked in the, f yeah, I can just see the first cluster of flower buds there um, starting. So, you know, by the end of the month, they should have set some fruits. And at the same time, um, they will have probably used up most of the fertilizer in this top layer of, of compost. So this one will receive some fertilizer as normal. This one, we're going to um, um, leave it run a little bit longer because um, this compost 
uh, it's supposed to be um, sufficiently rich in compost initially at least and while we're using it in that top layer of the bag so let's get these planted and um, keep an eye on our channel we'll give you some updates as to how these two compare any questions any observations if you've got experiences of growing plants in peat free compost we'd love to hear about it because i think as a gardening public here in the uk we've got to learn how to use peat free compost and it does behave differently um has different properties different ways it holds water and, and nutrients um, a lot of people have struggled with peat free compost over the years we've got to master it so that we can um as, as much as possible become uh, peat free and self-sufficient in compost here in the uk it's a big issue and I'm preparing another video sometime in the next few weeks to explore some of the options and some of the difficulties with uh, and challenges of, of peat free um, gardening as well as some of the fantastic opportunities. There's been some amazing developments in terms of growing media here in the UK and I'd like to keep you posted on that. So don't forget to, um, here we go, subscribe to our channel um, so that uh, you don't miss out on these videos. Most important thing is please comment with your suggestions, your experiences, your questions and um, let's talk about it. Thank you. Speak soon.